Hey guys, Nick Keller, Greg Brock, Atlas Premier Realty, coming to you with another video blog. Uh, today we're geared uh, directly towards sellers. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about seven home price pricing myths that you shouldn't fall for. Yep. So we'll get right into it. Yep. So the first one is that you will price your high your property higher, so then you have room to negotiate down. Why is that a bad idea? Well, first of all, the people that are probably going to be buying your house are going to be stretching to that point where you're thinking about pricing it. So you're going to miss the entire buyer pool that would actually be interested in your property. Yeah. yeah. And if you start high and you hold tight to that price, what do you? You're increasing your time on market. Yeah. Everybody knows that a house, the longer your house is on the uh, market, the less it stands to make. Yeah. So uh, the second one is. Uh, if I price my house too well, I might be leaving money on the table. And while in theory that might be the case, uh, anytime you do that, you're increasing the perception of value on your house and the likelihood of multiple people being interested in your house. Uh, and the faster it sells, the more you stand to make. Uh, you could really hardly ever underprice a property because- Especially in this market. Yeah, especially in the market conditions we're in now because uh, if, you, if you price it at where you should, uh, you're likely going to get a lot of people interested in it because the perception of value is there. Yep. And uh, another one is if you don't get the money that you want out of the property this time, you could relist and get the money you want out of it, say next spring or next summer or next time you list. And uh, that isn't always the case because we don't know what the market's going to do over the next six months or a year or however long you're thinking about waiting. Right. I mean, we could have a market shift and you can lose know. three to 10 or 15% on your on your market, so. Yep. Yep. You never know what the future's gonna hold. Absolutely. Uh, the fourth one is uh, X price is as low as I'll go. So we hear this all the time, uh, unless you're really up against it and you're gonna go underwater um, or it's gonna put you in hardship, uh, setting that, that your, your heels in the sand is a bad idea if you get into that mindset because ultimately the market determines how much your house is worth. Right. So you're going to be fighting uphill the whole entire time. It's, it's, uh, you want to do your best to position it based on evidence and facts and research uh, and then see how the market responds to it. It's not an exact science. Right. The next one comes into play more when you actually start getting offers in and uh, the you know, question is, is why is this offer coming in so low that the offer should have come in closer to asking price? Um, really an offer is an offer and you as the seller and your agent will do the best to negotiate that price as close to list price as possible. But again, like Nick just said, uh, the buyers are going to dictate what your home is going to sell for. Mm -hmm. Uh, the sixth one is outdated features shouldn't impact the, the, the selling price. Uh, and that is usually 100% false. So uh, you either do one of two things. You price it where the condition is or you bring the condition up to where you want to price it so long as it's in, um, in alignment with the other homes that are similar out there. Right. But it absolutely, anytime you have improvements that need to be made cosmetically and you have repairs that need to be done, if you get buyers in there, all they're seeing is dollar signs and they're just thinking how much could they be getting the house, how much less could they be getting the house for. Yep. So it does impact the price. Last one is really coming back to what Nick said and I have said and the buyer's offer comes in low and they don't even, and the seller doesn't even want to counter. Yeah. Um, that's a really bad strategy. Oftentimes, uh, the offer you have in hand is willing to negotiate up and an offer in hand is worth two in the bush, as they yep. say, right? Yep. So um, just work with your agent and oftentimes we can ask for supporting evidence right. from a buyer's agent. If they found comps that maybe we missed, um, it's something to consider and getting a, a counter offer is, is what we're looking for. Yeah, yeah. You, sometimes you just wanna see how far you'll go, but like Greg said, if you ask them for what's your supporting evidence for this offer and there's really nothing behind it, you kind of put them on the spot that they know they're kind of gouging you a little bit and it'll come up. So uh, just wanna stay open-minded with that. So uh, that's all we have. Uh, so hopefully that clears up any um, you know misconceptions about pricing. If you have any questions, as always, you can reach out to any one of us here at Atlas. We'd be happy to help. As always, appreciate the support and we'll see you next time. Thanks a lot.